So this is the first example we found endpoints for, and this time we want to graph the entire function. So you'll remember you have in your notes back here, we've already found the endpoints for each of these pieces. We have an endpoint at 0, 0, we have an endpoint at 0, 2, and we have an endpoint at 0, 3. We've also decided whether or not they need open or closed circles. So let's go back and see about graphing this function now. You'll see that I've given us space to graph each piece separately. We're starting with the first piece. X squared if X is less than zero. We said that we had an endpoint for the first piece at zero, zero, and that we needed an open circle at zero, zero. The rest of this graph is still the parabola. This is the graph of X squared. We're looking at less than zero. So negative one, negative two. You should know when X is negative one, it's going to equal one. When X is negative two, it equals four. This is that parabola where X is less than zero with an open circle. The second piece we want to graph on the next X, Y axis I have there is this one, X equals two if X equals zero. This is just a single point on the graph. When X is zero, the G of X or Y equals two, that's it. We don't want X greater than zero. We don't want X less than zero. We only want X equals zero. In the third piece, we're looking at x plus 3, where x is greater than 0. Again, we had an endpoint at 0, 3. Now, let me just pause a minute and remind you where we're getting these endpoints from. Remember, we had a 0, 0 with an open circle. We had 0, 2 with a closed circle. And now we're looking at the third piece. We have an endpoint at 0, 3 with an open circle. So there's my open circle at 0, 3. And the equation is x plus 3 if x is greater than 0. So this time we're heading to the numbers greater than 0. We see if x equals 1, y would be 4. If x equals 2, y would be 5. And of course, this is a linear equation, so we know we have a straight line here. When we graph our piecewise defined functions, all three of these pieces appear on one graph. So let's take this piece from the first restriction and put it on our graph. There's the first piece. Now let's take the second piece when X is zero, Y is two. Remember that that was a single point with a closed circle. And now let's take the third piece it had an endpoint at 0, 3 with an open circle. And then it was a linear function going up, an increasing linear function. That should be connected to that circle there. All right. This is our piecewise defined function. Is it a function? Sure it is. No matter where I draw a vertical line, it, the vertical line intersects the graph exactly once. Even if I draw my vertical line right here, the only place it's intersecting the graph is at my closed circle. The open circles mean there is no graph at the open circle. And that's why 
when we do these piecewise defined functions, your circles will line up, but only one of them will be closed. So what about the domain of this function? Well, I hope you can see that it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no gaps in the domain. The arrow on the left is going up, but it's also going to the left. The arrow on the right is going up and to the right. The range? Well, if I look here, I see there's no graph below zero. There's not even a graph at zero. So I'm going to use an open circle for zero. But then anywhere else I look along the graph, along the y-axis, I still have a graph. So it's going from zero to positive infinity. We'll try another one in the next lesson.